Welcome back. Let's keep going with problem 11 from Fundamentals of Chapter 2. Uh, in this problem, uh, they want if the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the bracket is to be 80 pounds directed on the U axis. So, again, they're giving you the magnitude of the resultant and uh, direction. Determine the magnitude of F and its direction, theta. So, similar to the past problem we just did. All right, so. Uh, let's let's start from the beginning again. So let's do let's F. Let's call this one F uh, F one F two. Now we know the resultant is going in this direction at eighty and the magnitude of eighty pounds. Okay. So let's do F. Force F is unknown, but we know that in the X direction, it's going to go F cosine theta I plus F sine theta J. Okay? So we know it's going up and to the right. So positive, positive. F1, it's only pointing in the X direction. So it's it only has one of these components. So it's going to be 50 I plus 0j. You don't have to write 0j, but it's just to visualize it. Okay, let's do F2. Now F2 is pointing to the left and down, so it's going to be negative, negative. So let's do minus 90, so again, because we have that 3, 4, 5 triangle, so let's take the magnitude, minus 90. Now, what side is parallel to the x-axis? That'll be our i component minus 94 fifths J okay so we've broken all these down and now let's look at the resultant so the resultant is pointing along that axis U so we know our resultant is made up of F R X I plus F R Y J which can be translated to magnitude of it, 80 pounds. What's the adjacent side of the triangle that it forms? It'll be that the one, the side that's parallel to the x-axis, so it's gonna be cosine 45i, and it's pointing to the right, so positive, and then it's pointing downward, so minus 80 sine 45j. And that's FR. All right. So we know from what we've been doing that the resultant force equals the summation of all these. So let's do, let's equal this X component to the summation of all these X components. Okay. So it's going to be 80. cosine 45 equals F cos theta plus 50 minus 54 and then the y axis it'll be minus 80 sine 45 and that is F sine theta plus zero minus nine oops let's just get the result of that eighteen times four minus seventy two okay and now let's again let's isolate f cosine theta and f sine theta in each equation so f cos theta it's going to equal 80 times cosine 45 minus 50, 60.6, uh, what is this, pounds? Yeah, pounds. Well, let's leave a unit list for now. And then F sine theta, right, 
it'll be minus 80 times sine 45 plus 72 <clears throat> and that'll be 15.4 and again do the same as we did last time we isolated uh, we we made a substitution with f so we said f equals 60.6 .6 divided by cos theta and then we plugged in this um, we, did, we substituted this f with 60.6 .6 divided by cosine theta down here in the other equation. So 60.6 .6 cos theta sine theta 15.4. And then we know that that's going to end up being tan theta 15.4 over 60.6. .6 right and then we solve for that so inverse tan 15.4 divided by 60.6 that gives us theta of 14.3 let's leave it at that and now let's figure out what f is so 15.4 so f will be 15.4 divided by sine 14.3 and f is 62.3 pounds all right and again so taking the problem statement we we're able to they gave us the resultant force and then we we're just we did exactly what we've been doing the past like four problems okay um, yeah, so we got our magnitude of the force F, which was 62.3, and then the theta, which was 14.3. All right. I hope this stick in now. Um, if you guys have questions or comments, just leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, thanks for your time. See you next video.